school. You went to Turnham School yeah. when you were about eight, yeah. and you said you had a very, very short attention span. Yeah. What was going on with you? I just found it very hard to to focus on what they wanted me to do. If you had to write an essay, if, if you had to do maths or anything, it, you know, the teacher would have to spend a lot more time because I didn't quite grasp it. My handwriting was really poor. I wasn't confident with my reading. And then I remember being outside the classroom, like, for the third occasion, and Mr Pigden, when he walked past, you know, I wouldn't even look at him. You know what I mean? I was so scared of him because he was really strict. And I remember on this third occasion, he looked at me, he looked down at me because I was seven. I was, I was at the school the other day because I had to do his plaque. And he looked down at me. It felt, <laughs> it felt like he was looking at me for an hour. And I wouldn't look at him, but I could see his clothes. I remember he had these, his shoes were so shiny. He had turn-up trousers. His suit was always so immaculate. And, and then he looked at me and then he went into the classroom, said a couple of things to the teacher, this and that. And then he came back outside and he said, come with me. And that changed my life. I mean, many castaways will sit where you are now, Ian, and reference individual teachers who changed their lives. But Mr Pigden was truly important to yeah. you, to the extent that you dedicated your autobiography yeah. to him. How did he treat you? How did he engage with you and challenge well, you? I know he loved me. You know, I don't know why he chose me. I'm glad that he did. Once he came in and, you know, it was everything was so much better. He, he was the one who taught me about Jimmy Greaves and making sure when you finish, Ian, when, you, when you're when you going through with the goalkeeper, pass the ball into the goal, look for the space, score beautiful goals. But he gave me responsibility. I mean, I used to collect the registers from the teachers. Then they made me milk monitor. I really liked that. And, you know, I looked up... What was up. that like for the kid who couldn't sit still? Well, it was really good. I, I just felt important. Hmm. And then what he'd do, he'd put me back into the classroom... And then my writing got better. He wouldn't let me play football if he'd heard that I've been naughty in class. He just gave me a sense of feeling like I, I had some use. You know, it was really weird because of the viral video that went around. Where yes, people this seemed... is in 2010, you were reunited with him. Mm. And that video clip online has been viewed over two million times. You had thought that he had yeah. passed away. You'd been told incorrectly. Couldn't, yeah, couldn't find him. I was doing a television show and there was a, there was a bit in it where I had to go back to the ground and, you know, just sit in the director's box. And so I was sitting there in a reflective moment. And then he just came off my right shoulder. And the funny thing about it, Loz, was um, is that because he was like three or four steps higher than me, so the first thing I remember doing was I just ripped my hat off my head. Just went like that. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd said to him, oh, my gosh, I thought, I thought you died, I thought you were dead. And he said, well, I'm very much alive, Ian, something like that. And then he kind of, he said, how proud he is of me. And then I hugged him. And because he was three or four steps up, I felt like I was like seven again. We kept in touch from then on. And I remember him saying, uh, you know, because he was one of the youngest pilots in World War Two. He was one of the pilots chosen to do the flyover of Buckingham Palace, right? So I remember him saying that he was more proud of the fact that I played for England than him flying over Buckingham Palace. Oh, I love that man. You can see it in your so, face in that moment on that clip. Gosh, man, I'm so sorry to people who are listening. I'm just turning into this <laughs> bumbling, crying guy. But... You know, it's... Um, They'll all be crying with you, Ian, don't worry. When he said that, he, he changed my life just by recognising, I don't know what it was when I was standing outside that classroom, that I needed more, and and he gave it to me. And, you know, to be able to unveil his plaque at Turnham Junior School was the greatest thing I've ever done in my life, to be honest. <laughs> 